Hey there, welcome to CT Collectibles MC. Hope you are doing well today. We're going to take a little closer look at Tampa Rays outfielder Randy Arizarena. Um, if if I was a storyteller, which I'm not, I'm, I'm a data guy, but uh, if I was able to tell a decent story, this would be one I'd be very interested in. So uh, getting his start in Cuba, he was making about $4 a month and did pretty well there. So they bumped him up to $32 a month. So needless to say that uh, you know Cuba treats their, uh, <laughs> their people pretty poorly. And he made his way over to Mexico when he got there. He was too poor to, uh, uh, he had nothing to his name. He didn't have any money. He had to borrow cleats from a, uh, from a teammate during tryouts so he could, uh, try out. And he made the, he made, uh, made the teams there, worked his way up and eventually came to the United States and is doing, uh, very well in Major League Baseball. But he was so grateful for Mexico, um, getting him his, kind of his start that uh that you know he he went back and said you know listen uh make me a citizen uh, i'd like to represent you in the world baseball classic and they did that and he rewarded them with uh with a pretty nice uh pretty nice performance there so it sounds like a a pretty great story something i want to dig into a little bit more at some point but again not not up to me to tell there's people that do that kind of stuff and they do it way better than me so um with that said let's uh let's dig into the numbers and tear them apart all right um <laughs> We'll start off with uh, with just kind of his overview here. He's entering his age 28 season and, uh, you know, coming up over the past few years, kind of a, you know, a middling power guy with a decent average and uh, and some speed. So uh, the biggest name, not so much, but in terms of, uh, you know, overall performance, you know, very, very solid player. So um, coming up, his, uh, his hit tool, his prospect report, his hit tool, a little bit above average on that uh, – that 20 to 80 scale game power raw power speed again a little bit above average you kind of those 50 great prospects are average he's a slightly above that a little below average in the fielding for a future value of about 60 which is uh which is more than a serviceable player and that's kind of what he's turned out to be here so we'll look at kind of the four categories hitting power speed and defense and see what we see here so Starting off with hitting, uh, we have his uh, 2022 numbers, 2023 projections, and his career numbers here. So he's about a 260 hitter, carrying a higher BABIP than normal in that 320 range because of his speed. Um, the speed of your guys can have a higher BABIP. So, you know, 300 is kind of a round number. Um, you can be above or below that. And he's been able to stick above that again because of the speed. He walks a little less than usual at around 8% for the career, and he strikes out a little bit more than you'd like to see for somebody without a ton of power in that 25% range weighted on base average in the 330s is expected weighted on base average at least for 2022 is right around 300 and so there's a decent differential there but he's been able to outperform uh, his expected numbers in terms of expected slugging expected batting average expected weight, weighted on base average um, on a pretty regular basis again the speed's going to help do that here weighted runs created he's solidly in the 120s so borderline elite level bat to guy you like to have on your team wins above replacement typically puts up in that two to three area uh, because the defense first of all in the outfield you're not getting a lot of credit for wins above replacement defensively um but he's and his defense isn't quite there so uh but without the uh the the the, the gaudy stats you know closer to 300 or you know 30 30 something home runs he's not going to be that four or five win player so if we look at his swing profile last year he swung outside the zone more than he has in his career he was uh he was kind of in that 26 to 20, 28% range, you know, balls outside the zone that he would swing it. Last year, it jumped up to 33%, so his career average around 30%. You get above 30, that's that's a little bit more questionable for, for a hitter. If you're below 30, um, then then you're doing pretty well. You have a good, pretty good plate presence. Juan Soto kind of leads the league at around 20%, and you can see that he walks about 20% of the time. So not that there's a one-to-one -one correlation on that. Just the lower the number, the better, uh, the better eye you have. Inside the zone, he swings about 65% of pitch and is a contact outside the zone sitting around 63 percent which is about as high as it was since 2019 with st louis which was a, a smaller sample size but the more you swing outside the zone though the weaker the contact becomes and that hurts the average overall zone contact a little bit more zone contact up around 81 percent last year and that's up from the mid 70s and that's because he's seeing some more fastballs inside the zone uh, mixed in with some other things that are that are actually kind of hurting him the contact number is right around 70 percent um, but again, he's seeing uh, he's seeing some more uh, a decent uh, the the mix that he's seeing is 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 changing, and we'll take a closer look at that in the uh, in the in the next couple of slides here. So 
Um, if you look at his splits overall, he's a uh, he's a righty. So as he faces uh, lefties, he does pretty well. He hits over 300 against them. But you know, the, the problem is the righties that he faces, they're, uh, they're throwing some more breaking stuff, and it's leaks outside the zone. He has trouble picking up on that. Uh, home against lefties, he hits around 400. So if you're doing daily fantasy and you see uh, a lefty, uh, you see him playing at home against a lefty, uh, pretty good chance he's going to do something here. And in terms of uh, his monthly numbers as the season wears on, he actually gets a a little bit better overall here. So if we look at his batting statistics, uh, maximum exit velocity, uh, he does have a lot of pop. Um, average his regular exit velocity. It's it's more it's a little bit more pedestrian. So he can put a charge in, in into a ball when he wants to. He just doesn't do it on a on a consistent uh, basis. You know, expected batting average um, in the two twenties, and we've seen that he's a closer to two sixty hitter. Slugging weighted on base average. He does outperform his metrics again. Speed helps with that one here. So fastballs ticked up a little bit last year. He saw some, saw some more fastballs. The number of breaking balls that he's seen over the past few years has steadily risen as well. And that's uh, that's where he's having some trouble with uh, with the contact, especially as those righties throw the uh, breaking stuff and it goes outside the zone. He kind of he chases it, and that that's hurting him a little bit here. So he, if he can get that walk rate up, you know he's sitting at seven eight percent now. If he can get up to ten eleven percent, you know, I think that helps his uh, that'll help his overall overall game here off speed. No need to no no need to, <laughs> to, to to mix it up there. You just throw a breaking ball out outside the zone. So he's seeing fewer of the off speed pitches, and you can see. Uh, the, the highest number of pitches that he sees percentage-wise is outside the zone away, so low and away. He gets a decent number here. Here's your fastballs. We'll just kind of go away from them a little bit here. But the breaking stuff, they'll just, they're not afraid to start that down the middle and let it just come out the zone because he's going to chase it. And that's where that, uh, that, that chase rate is coming in and the strikeouts and, uh, and some of that weaker contact. So he's going to have to start to learn to identify these pitches and, and start laying off of those. So a lot of those pitches, again, they're going to start out in the same path, but a good pitcher, We'll we'll tunnel them all in the same same uh, you know get them all in the same tunnel, but as they break low and away, you know good good hitters will lay off of that stuff. So he he not quite there yet. Average exit velocity sixty eight percentile, maximum exit velocity ninety fifth percentile. So we can see that that one fourteen. You're talking about one twenty. That's your Judge, your Cruz, your Stanton, and so he's not too far off from those guys. That number keeps ticking up, but the regular exit velocity is is staying kind of the same here. The launch angle. Doesn't matter how hard you hit it if you can't uh, if you can't get it upwards of 15 or 20 degrees on a regular basis. Now you're just going to put it off the fence, and that's that's what we see out of him. He drives a lot of balls into the ground or line drives, and he's got the speed to beat him out for now. But how long does that last? Barrel percent around nine, around eight percent here. So barrel percent is that 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 the combination of launch angle and maximum exit velocity. Um, you, if you are, if you're able to barrel up 100% of your, of the balls that you hit, then you're like a 1500 OPS player. So, uh, hard hit rate, you know, some of the big dogs are on 50%. He's hovering around 40% here. Weighted on base average, expected weighted on base average. Again, he can outperform some of those numbers because of his speed. Um, but the, uh, the slugging and the X slugging again, it's outperforming. So he can turn those singles into doubles and, and that's where that really helps. At some point, the speed goes away, and then these things normalize, and, and then, he, then 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 the then the overall game becomes a little less fun, I suppose. Here, fifty percent of the balls on the ground. Again, what what do they say in Major League? You want to hit the ball on the ground and be legging them out, Willie Mays. Hey, so he's doing that with uh, with some effect here, but not a lot of fly balls, home run to fly ball rate in twenty twenty. He went nuts for a short period of time. There's there was going to be some regression there, and he's he's kind of settled into that mid teens, um, you know, for home run to fly ball. The elite guys are going to be around 30, 35 uh, percent. Some of the uh, you know the thirty home run guys are going to be around twenty five percent, and he's sitting around fifteen percent. You know, kind of in that range. So not a lot of uh, you know he's got the power, just he's just not putting enough balls into the air for the most part. Thirty two percent of his balls in the air. You want to see that number a bit higher if he can trade some grounders for fly balls, and we could we could have something here. But again, with the speed, you know, you don't have to do anything uh, too fancy here. He pulls and goes up the middle at a decent percentage. You know, roughly eighty percent of the balls that he that he hits 75 to 80 percent are up the middle or, or a pull but he's got 20 percent soft contact and we would re really like to see uh see that number get down to you know 10 or 12 percent or something like that to become a uh, elite level hitter and if he keeps chasing uh balls outside the zone and, and hitting off the end of his bat that's not going to happen here hard hit rate again we'd like to see that uh see that higher and so if we look at a speed and defense so you can see some of these other uh, numbers ex expected weighted on base average they're all pretty low but he does outperform it because of that sprint speed 
87th percentile, one of the fastest guys in the league here. But in terms of uh, defense, doesn't get a great jump. His outs above average, he's about middle of the pack and doesn't need his below average arm strength for the most part. And so you can see with the spray chart here, a lot of up the middle and left field. And there's a big cluster of hits. And so this is where his speed comes into play. And this is how he's out, able to outperform a lot of those uh, expected metrics is because he can hit these uh, these these rollers and, and actually beat them out here. So um, he, he does have the potential to put it out, but he doesn't put it. It's, it's, it's kind of a two-outcome guys, either lining one in or hitting a grounder or he's putting it in the air and it's going outside. You don't see a lot of uh, off-the-wall type uh, doubles or anything like that. So... Um, in terms of fantasy, what are we doing with him here? So a lot of drafts have already happened, but if you haven't, hey, right now he's about the 10th outfielder going off the board in standard points leagues. He's probably the 20 or 25th outfielder because he doesn't have these uh, these gaudy home run numbers or, or average or anything like that. And Roto, he ranks quite a bit higher. He's, he's right around that average draft position, which makes sense. A lot of Roto drafts, and so the ADPs are more closely reflected of the Roto rank. But because he has... Uh, you know, top five, you know, stolen base potential. He's going to jump up a lot in those Roto ranks there. So it depends on the league that you want. But to knock him down to points leagues, Roto, you're probably fair in uh, in real life stuff here. Uh, a couple of guys that were kind of that I thought I thought of that were kind of um, similar to where he's at at his age, at his age were Starling Marte and Adam Eaton. Nobody thinks of them as, as Hall of Famers. They think of them as good players, but not Hall of Famers. And he's not quite on that track even. So, um, you know, it's coming up at age 24. That that doesn't help. And then you had some, you know, the shortened 2020 season. So he's been solid. Um, he's kind of tracking with these guys. But you know, if you're going to be, uh, if you're going to have long term relevance. Um, you you need to be ahead of the, uh, the the pace of at least these uh, these two guys here, and he's he's not he's well below them. So in terms of long term relevance, it's not uh, it's not there. I, I would say don't. So for me, you don't pay anything. Don't pay very much for his because if I was a fan of Randy Arizona, um this is what I do with like Byron Buxton. Basically, you know, he's he's an incredible talent, but he doesn't play enough. And so, you, but similar thing where he just you know. The, the, the 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 tracking isn't quite there, so it's like I'll pick up cards if they're cheap. But otherwise, there's going to be a great opportunity in a few years when uh, you know he's out of the game and you know, everyone's kind of forgot about him. You can get these things for you can get his stuff for basically nothing. And if you do happen to have a high end card of his or whatever, you don't want to be left holding the bag. Um, if you're looking to cash out, you'll wait for that hot streak or something like that and in unload. But uh, the, the longer term relevance is probably not there for for Randy Arizona. But again, great story and. Uh, and, uh, you know, it's hard not to pull for the guy here, but you can say sometimes you got to take emotion out of it. So, anyways, that's what I got for you. I hope, uh, hope you enjoyed. Like, subscribe, do all that kind of stuff. And we will talk to you later. Bye now.